and we're going to listen to papers by first Matkuna Remy, um, who is uh, starting a PhD on the Kurdish literature at the Ecole Normale Supérieure in Lyon, a paper entitled Face to Face Encounters in Orwell's Early Works and Aesthetics of the Contemporary. Then um, we're going to hear uh, John Prairie's and Romy Mukherjee's paper given by uh, Romy alone, I'm afraid, um, about Orwell's people. Romy um, teaches at Sciences Po Paris and at the University of Chicago. He's also um, associate editor of the International Social Science Journal at UNESCO. And uh, he works also in the ethics sector. And uh, is this a book about the... Uh, it's out. So uh, his new book is out, and it's called Durkheim and Violence, and it's published by um, Blackwell. Um, third in our session will be Patricia Ray from Queen's University, Ontario. She teaches modernist literature uh, there, and she's finishing a book about Orwell as a modernist author, and um, she'll be giving a paper entitled Modernist Orwell. I'm oh, sorry, I, I forgot to give um, Romy's title again, Orwell's People. Um, so, Orwell's People and then Modernist Orwell. And finally, Zorakia, you may have recognized uh, John uh, Baxenday sitting over there. No, um, as John Baxenday couldn't come, uh, Olivier uh, Estelle is going to read um, his paper. I don't know if you're willing to take questions about it. And afterwards, as usual, we're going to have a um, long um, debate, and the speakers are going to take questions in English, mainly. English and French. English and French. Mostly English to Tricia. I'll ask as uh, she says that it can be. Being in the field of the other and already in the field of the time. 
This is where the notion of alterity can perhaps become associated with that of alteration, um, whereby self and other interpenetrate one another while at the same time maintaining uh, the awareness of a difficult, if not impossible, communion. Uh, as Levy Mass observed, I quote, in some the main ables. The ethical relation thus initiated between observer and observed is indissociable from all those aesthetics, for it, uh, it seems that a rhetoric is necessary to convey the particular idiom of otherness. This is why I will now ponder upon the following questions. What defines all those distinctive style and aesthetics when it comes to writing about the other, uh, particularly in scenes involving first encounters? What does his humanist aesthetics under, um, uh, how, sorry, his, his humanist aesthetics underlie a political vision using the word political in the widest possible sense? This is a quote by Orwell from Why I Write using the, the word political in the widest possible sense of, I would add, a vivre ensemble. I am particularly indebted uh, to the works of a philosopher who has relentlessly sought to move away from the traditional ontological definition of the self and the dichotomy between self and other, that, that is Emmanuel Levinas, so not only we were saying. Um, I will also ground my analysis on Dutch anthropologist Johannes Fabian and his groundbreaking theory of co-evilness developed in time and the other, and which refers to the time one shares with the other, one's contemporaneity with the other. Indeed, indeed Fabian's note, I quote, a long-established persistent tendency to deny when we write about them coevalness to the very same people whom we study. For him, the denial of coevalness is a political act, not just a discursive fact. And this is a quotation uh, from uh, Fabian. Logically, exposing that denial and striving for the awareness of one's shared time with the other uh, also becomes a political act which seeks to transcend the divisions between fact and fiction, anthropology and literature, ethics and aesthetics. Orwell's work works become anthropological, uh, perhaps in the sense that it reflects upon the move from identity to alterity, from self to other and other to self, and also between observation, uh, observation, evocation, fact, and fiction through textual and literary mise en scène, challenging what um, anthropologist Clifford Gear sees as, I quote, the confusion endemic in the West since Plato at least, of the imagined with the imaginary, of the fictional with the false, making things out with making them up. These methodological tools underscore how the reflection on alterity and the writing of alterity in Orwell must necessarily consider the essential questions of time and place themselves at the crossroads, as these conferences are also shown, between anthropology, history, literature, and philosophy, again pointing to the impossibility uh, of placing any of Orwell's works into ready-made categories and genres, which his works constantly seek to evade. In turn, I quote, anthropology's findings pose the same problems that philosophers, historians, and literary critics um, address when they think about representations of time. This is again a quote by Johannes Fabian. This will also enable me to shed some light on the porosity of frontiers, as what he was saying, between his early fiction and his non-fiction. For indeed, the formal problem is, a uh, quote by Raymond Williams, a problem of social relationships and the problem of social relationships is then a problem of form.